Question 4.1 says, show that the equation of f can be written like this. Now this can be quite weird, but let me show you guys. There's a little trick on how to do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write out the equation of f of x equals to 3x minus 8 over x minus 2. And what I'm going to do now is check this out, guys. It's quite interesting. I'm going to add a 2 over here, but you can't just add something. So what I'm going to do is I'm also going to minus it. So it's almost like I've done nothing. Well, the reason I've done this is that this part here can now become 3x minus 6, and the part at the bottom can become x minus 2, but then we still have minus 2. So what I can now do is I'm going to say that this is the same as, whoops, let me get a different color. I'm going to say that this is the same as 3x minus 6 over x minus 2 minus 2 over x minus 2. We allowed to do that. You know, if you have a plus b over c, you can write it as a over c plus b over c. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out a common factor of 3 at the top, and that's going to give me that. And then I still have this part over here. Now, what happens is that these x minus 2s, they cancel out, and so we are left with 3 minus 2 over x minus 2. And then we can just write it the other way around. So minus 2 over x minus 2 plus 3. And so very often I've seen them do this in exams where they'll give you something weird. Um, they'll give you something weird like uh, 3x minus 8 over x minus 2. And then you need to try to turn it into something that looks like a proper hyperbola. I'll be honest though, you're, usually it's a lot easier. They'll usually give you something like x plus 3 over x minus 1. So what you then do is you just try to make the top the same as the bottom. So you would do something like this. You would say x plus 3 um, minus 2, sorry, minus 4, because that'll give me the minus 1 that I have at the bottom. But you can't just minus 4. You would then have to also add 4. And then you do this. But then what happens is that you can group these three together. So that becomes x minus 1 plus 4 over x minus 1. Then I'll group it those two and those two. So that's going to become x minus 1 over x minus 1 plus 4 over x minus 1. And then what happens is that these over here cancel out. And so you're left with 1 plus 4 over x minus 1. Okay, so that's just another example. That's how they usually do it. It's a lot easier. But the one that we did in this exam paper was a lot more challenging. Question 4.2 says, 4.2.1 says, calculate the coordinates of A. Now, A is where your asymptotes intersect. So what we do is we take this equation here, which I'll just write it out again, and we can go work out the asymptotes. The asymptotes will be this part here. So that's where x is equal to 2. And then this will be your y equals to 3. So what that then means is that this coordinate here at A must be 2 and 3. Question 4.2.2, calculate the coordinates of B. Now that's very easy. B is your y-intercept. And to find a y-intercept, you make x equal to 0. And that's going to become minus 2 over 0 minus 2 plus 3. And if you had to go work that out, you're going to get 4. So the coordinates of B will be 0 and 4. The coordinates of C, well, that's also easy because that's just your x-intercept. And to find an x-intercept, we know that we should make y 0. So we can say 0 equals to minus 2 over x minus 2 plus 3. What I would do is I'll take this to the left so it becomes positive, like that. Then what I would do is I'd multiply the x minus 2 over so it becomes like that. And then you're going to get 3x minus 6. Take the um, minus 6 over to become an 8. And so x is going to be equal to 8 over 3. And so the coordinates of C will be 8 over 3 and 0. OK, so now they say uh, for 4.3.1, calculate the equation, write down the equation of L. Now, L is the axis of symmetry. Now, if you've watched my previous videos on axis of symmetry for a hyperbola, you should understand that it's very easy. In summary, we know that all hyperbolas have two axes of symmetry. There's one that goes this way, and there's one that goes um, this way. Whoops, must go through the asymptotes. There we go. Now, this one here always has a positive gradient of 1, and this one always has a negative gradient 
of minus 1. And so they have only given us the negative gradient one, and that's what they want us to calculate. So we can say that y is equal to mx plus c. We know that its gradient is always minus 1. That is just the way that asymptotes work for hyperbolas. To find c, you always plug in a point. Now the point that you use is going to be this point over here, because that line touches that point. And so that's going to be coordinates of 2 and 3. And so you can say 3 equals to minus 1 times 2 plus c, and so c is equal to 5. And so therefore y is equal to negative 1x plus 5. Now 4.3.2 is interesting because it's only for two marks. Now some of you might be thinking, how can that be worth two marks? Um, well, let me explain. So if you wanted to, to find the point where two graphs intersect, you would have to make them equal to each other. So you could make this equation equal to the straight line, which is the one we just found. But that's going to take a long time. Let me rather take us back to grade 10, where we, under, where we studied the basic hyperbola. So let me show you guys. In grade 10, if we have a very basic hyperbola, where the asymptotes have not moved, then let's say this equation was 2 over x. Can you guys remember from grade 10 that this point over here and this point over here, which you find on the equation of symmetry, is always going to be the square root of 2, because it's this number, and then the y value would also be the square root of 2, because the x and the y is positive. Then for this one, it would be negative square root 2 and negative square root 2. Okay, if we had a hyperbola in grade 10, but the points were here and here, then this coordinate, think about it carefully. What would the x, sorry, this, this equation would be y equals to minus 2 of x. So this would be square root 2, because the x is still positive, but the y is negative, so you'd go like that. And then this one would be negative for the x, so you'd put a negative 2 like that, but then the y is positive. Okay, that is how we used to do that in grade 10. But now, our graphs can move up and down, left and right. But what I want to quickly show you is that would you agree with me that this point P is in almost the same position as which one, guys? Would you say this one, this one, this one, or this one? Well, well done if you said it's this one. It's, it's pretty much the same as that. It's in the same shape as that. So what we can do is we can say that the coordinates of P are going to be, now we need to go remember what this equation that we had was. Uh, it was a negative 2. Okay, so, the square, so we're going to use square root of 2, but it must be negative square root 2, because this is a negative. And then this one is a, and then, and then we're going to probably plus or minus something. And then this one over here, the y value is a square root of 2, but we're probably going to have to plus or minus something. I'm not quite sure just yet. So now what we do, guys, is we go to this equation over here. Well, let me write it down for us. And so what we should identify now is that our graph has been moved two places to the right. And so that means this point is also two places to the right. So over here we're going to say plus 2. And then what we should see here is that our graph has moved three places upwards. And so we'll say over here plus 3. So what we're doing is we're taking the original grade 10 point and then we're simply moving it according to the translations of our graph. I hope that that makes sense. It's very important. And so if we had to go get the decimal value of that, it would be 0.59 and 4.41. Question 4.4, if f is reflected in the x-axis, write down the equation of g. Okay, so if you reflect something in the x-axis, let's see what happens. Let's say you have this point over here, and the coordinates are 1 and 1. If you reflect it in the x-axis, it means you're going to end up over here where your x value will still be 1, but your y value has become negative. So the point I'm trying to show you is that the y values become negative. So if f of x, which I'll say y, is currently equal to um, this, then to find g, you're going to have to change the y to a negative, because that's what happened over here. So we put a little negative in front of the y, and then what you do is you go get the y value by itself. So you divide everything with negative. So this is just going to become 2 over x minus 2. This negative cancels out when you divide with a negative. And then this divided by a negative just becomes 
negative 3. And so there is our final answer. y equals to 2 over x minus 2 minus 3. If you're not comfortable with dividing with a negative, then my other option for you would be take the y to the right and then take these two to the left. Question 5.5, very interesting. I know a lot of students don't like these types of questions. So what we're going to do here, and it's only for two marks, so it can't be that challenging. We got to find places where if you multiply the x values and the f of x, the graph of f of x, we need to get a positive. That's what bigger than zero means. So how could we do that? Well, there are two scenarios. We either need x to be negative and f of x to be negative, because then when you multiply them, you make a positive. The other option is that we want f of x, I mean x to be positive and f of x to be positive. So when you multiply them, um, it will still be positive. So let's start with this. Let's go find the areas on the graph where x is negative. Well, we know that x is negative for all of this. So we are only looking at this part of the graph. Okay, so we're looking at all of that. So, okay, so we've got, we've got that. Now, is the graph of f, which is the hyperbola, is it negative in that area or is it positive? Now, remember, f of x is a y. So look at the y values in that area. Nope, they are all positive. Can you see that? Those y values are positive. So we will not find anything for that interval over there. Our next scenario is where x is positive. So where is x positive? x is positive for all of this stuff. So we're now looking at, we're now looking at um, all of that to the right hand side. And we want to know, is there also, um, is the graph of f also positive in that area? So the y values? Well, yes, here it is here. The y values are positive here. And then the y values are also positive here. So those are our answers. Now we need to use the x values when giving the answers. That's what they always want. They always want, um, they're saying solve for x. So the x values for this area over here, let me zoom in for you guys. We know that the x value here is, the, is 0 because it's the x-axis. So we're going to go from 0 up to 2. We can't touch the 2 because it's an asymptote. So we are going to say that x can be bigger than 0. Oh, and equal to 0 because they... What, what am I doing? Bigger than and equal to 0 because they said that it can be. But be careful. They're trying to lead you into a little trap. You cannot include the asymptote. You can't put a little asymptote. Um, you can't say bigger, smaller than and equal to there because an asymptote can never be touched. Right, now, the next part of our answer was this section over here. So what we'll say is we'll say or, and then we're going to go from C, which is 8 over 3. So we can say x must be bigger than or equal to 8 over 3, and it just goes on to infinity. So we can write it like that. If you prefer interval notation, you could say that x is an element from 0 in square brackets up to 2 in round brackets, or 8 over 3 um, in square brackets, actually, up to infinity in round brackets.